Uh, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. My name is uh, Detective Superintendent Cameron Harsley of State Crime Command uh, Child Sexual Investigation Unit. I'd firstly like to start off this morning by um, acknowledging the professionalism and cooperation which the Queensland Police Service Task Force Argos have received from the Toronto Police Service Child Exploitation Section and also the Postal Inspection Service of the United States. This is in regard to Project Spade, which was a worldwide investigation regarding child exploitation material. It was late in 2010 that the Toronto Police discovered a filming firm or company uh, that was producing child exploitation material. This company was not just producing, but it was procuring children from European nations to participate in the filming of uh, exploitative material. Predominantly, the children involved with these films were all boys under the age of 18 years of age. By May 2011, the Toronto Police had enough evidence to conduct a search on the company. It was during this search that 45 terabytes of data were discovered, all of which was child exploitation material. To put that in some type of context for you, 45 terabytes of data would equate to about 1,500 DVDs. So it's a significant amount of material. Can I just say that uh, the activities of the marketing of this company and the procurement of the product went worldwide. It was a market, it was a commercial venture. It was about exploiting children. Those people that purchased this material from that company and that website were supporting the procurement of children for exploitation. So those that were buying the product were just as guilty as if they were there filming the, ch filming the children themselves. By early 2013, Task Force Argos was engaged in the, in the investigation directly with Toronto Police. It was through this investigation Task Force Argos had two missions. The first mission, of course, was to identify any children within Queensland who are at risk and associated with this filming company. I can say confidently, as we stand today, there were no children within Queensland exploited through the activity of Project Spade. The second um, mission that Task Force Argos had was, of course, to look at the supply market, those people who were allegedly buying this product off this company. Um, through that, they conducted numerous investigations and executed over 36 search warrants on individual residences. Task Force Argos's operation was known as Lima Stampede, and with the, the tenancy of the investigators, we were able to uh, successfully arrest 32 persons on 208 charges. Uh, they are all Queensland people living in Queensland. Can I just go and say one thing about the profile of the offenders involved in this operation? This material that was being produced was predominantly, well, it was all boys, all boys under the age of 18. There's a terminology for pedophiles or people with unsavoury interests with children, and it's called boy lovers. So predominantly all the offenders, or they all were in Queensland, were males. They were aged between the age of 22 and 76 years of age. Their employment ranged from being retired or unemployed. There were four teachers involved in this activity. There was one student involved, a nurse, a bank manager, and a number of tradespersons. During the operation, Task Force Argos, at this point in time, seized more than 65,000 images. Uh, there are still some other images outstanding which Task Force Argos are going through. Can I reinforce two very prominent observations during this ob the operation by Task Force Argos? One is that people that are procuring this material have an unsavoury interest in children within the state of Queensland. That is unacceptable. The second thing that we noticed during this operation was the procurement of these images is supporting a market of exploitating children around the world. And that is also unacceptable. 
I'd give a warning to those who want to engage in this activity. It's fairly simple. It's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when Task Force Argos will catch you. If you want to download material like this in this state, or if you want to procure children to commit sexual acts within this state, then you will be arrested and placed before the court. It's as simple as that. We have a zero tolerance to this type of activity. And that is uh, predominantly found through the activity of Task Force Argos with the amount of arrests that they received from the information which we got from the Toronto Police. Um, any questions? Or 33, the release six to say 33 Queenslanders have been 32. 32 were charged in 208 charges, and there were 36 search warrants. In the video, <coughs> um, how young is the youngest child? Um, pre pubescent, I would say. So we would place it at an age of a seven or eight year old. Predominantly, the children were probably between 10 and 16 years of age. Um, some would say that this material was in some way artistic. By no means was this material artistic. There was no uh, common theme, there was no artistic flair to this material. It wasn't on the high end of child exploitation involving sexual acts, but it certainly wasn't artistic. It certainly was focused on a sexual interest in all those children that were displayed on the videos. Were any children removed from their homes in Queensland? No, there wasn't, um, to date. But I can say from experience, from the work that Task Force Argos do, is that predominantly people that possess this material will be contact offenders. There is a high percentage of them that are contact offenders. Why so many in Queensland, like out of, um, across the country almost, it's more than half, isn't it, that are here? Yeah, and I, I uh, equate that to the excellent work of Task Force Argos detectives, specifically on this job, because they knew the extent of the exploitation that was going on worldwide, can I just say that every warrant that we did and every person we spoke to was either arrested or we've got our eye on them. And we don't just go for one target within Argos, we will look at everyone who's associated with that person. There will be no stone unturned by Task Force Argos in getting these people that participate in this activity. With the children was... The, the vision of them, are they clearly distressed? Is it, are they clearly being used against their will on um, Some you would say would be a view of uncomfortableness. Um, I've looked at some of the images. Um, I'm appalled by them myself. I, I, say, I would say that you would have no doubt in your mind if you saw them that you would have a sexual interest in children, boys. Do you fear, I know that you said that no children in Queensland were exploited, but do you fear it was heading down that tra track whereby eventually Queensland children would have been the target? Certainly. Companies like this that were operating in Toronto were operating over some period of time. They chose the European companies because the ch children were easy access. It was easy to pay money to obtain that. But where there's a market, there's a will for children. So I'm, I'm confident that if the opportunity existed for these people to exploit the children of Queensland, they would. Do you feel that, um, I guess, with this we might have broken the back a little bit of uh, this underbelly of child pornography in Queensland, or is there a lot out there, do you think, that we still don't know about? Well, I don't think it's a Queensland issue. I think it's a worldwide issue, child pornography. I, I don't like using the terminology child pornography. It's child exploitation material. Have we broken the back? No, this just illustrates the market that is out there on a worldwide basis. Like, there are people setting up companies to produce child exploitation material. I think the market's flourishing. I think we have got to be vigilant all the time. These children were predominantly from Europe. Were they from Eastern Europe or all over Europe? Uh, all over Europe, mainly Russia and Ukraine. We're talking in Queensland about teachers, about students, about nurses, um, they were in positions of trust. Do they disgust you? I think people in trust, we put a higher value on their morals. Um, I think this illustrates quite clearly that if you have children, and I have children myself, you still have to have some parental responsibility. It's very important to risk manage the contact your children have with members of the public or anybody 
It's very important for you to communicate with your child every night and it's more important to know the environments in which your children are playing in. This is more common than the average Joe Boy thinks. It is, and I think it's a mistrust to think just because somebody's in a position that they can be trusted. It's interesting, I, blue cards, how is it concerning that these people are slipping through the net? <coughs> well, blue cards are a risk management strategy to try and reduce those people with unsavoury interests to having contact with children. It's not an end system. The end system is vigilance of our children. It's every parent, wherever you are in Queensland, making sure you know where your child is 24-7 and taking some responsibility for the contact your child has. Is there any information to suggest that these people in Queensland knew each other? No, not at the moment, but um, I would say that um, from previous experience, from social networking sites, these people are very aware of their online names and their online activity. Uh, do they meet in the coffee shop? No, they don't, but they meet online. Well, through this process, we, we rigorously have investigated and looked at everyone we've looked at, and we don't just look at them once. We have a very close look at them. Um, and have you found any other um, offences relating to you know, as a result of this? Uh, well, all the offences, all the people that have been charged have been charged with possession of child exploitation material and like offences. Are the teachers still working as teachers? No, the process is we'll notify the relevant authorities. So as um, soon as we uh, arrest somebody with a blue card or in a position like that, they are notified straight away that day. And it, get the file from, uh, to investigate, did you say 2013? 2013 we became aware of the information regarding uh, the participants of purchasing these products in Queensland. What month was that? It was uh, January, early 2013. Can you give us an indication of where these people who have been charged are from? Is it largely Brisbane? Is it it's all over the state? Uh, predominantly in the South East Queensland, uh, mainly because that's where most of the population are. But um, yeah. Uh, those details um, will be made available after the conference. Obviously, I mean, it is up to the courts now, but I mean, is there a, an indication from, from you guys, I suppose, of what some of these people might be facing in terms of, of jail terms? I mean, it's out of your hands now and it's up to the, to the law? Uh, well, that's, that's a matter for the courts to decide, not a matter for us. What was, was, the 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 the, um, was there any particular a uh, piece of evidence that stood out in your mind? Is there any particular person that seemed to have a, an overwhelming huge amount of material? Uh, well, it varies because um, people often will store the material on their, on their computer or in a storage device. Others will try and use cloud storage or offshore storage facilities. So um, we have done uh, raids where we may find two million images on a computer or we may do one where we find one image. We don't really care if it's one image or two million images, the same result is you'll be facing court. Once you received that initial information from Canadian police, is it then a matter of you tracing IP addresses, bank accounts? Can you just give us an idea of perhaps um, how you come to find these people? Yeah, well Task Force Argos used a number of methodologies, I won't go into all of them, but obviously bank accounts, IP addresses for computers are, are two often common ways. But other ways, as engaging people online, the covert activity are other ways. Um, also, uh, we have another other, number of other methodologies and tools which we have to identify people with this type of material on their computer. So in this situation, you received this information. Did it come to you, like, did you receive um, their online names and then it was a process of going about identifying who the people were behind these on No, we, we had very minimal information, uh, mainly account information. Could you give us a regional breakdown by any chance of how many, roughly, like, are they in Cairns, Townsville, Mackay, White Bay? And we'll supply that after the okay. conference. Were any of those charged known to police previous to 2010? Uh, there were a few known to us, but for, um, I suppose, a varied reasons, not just for exploitation of children. About Queensland, but just to clarify, were there any children in any other states of Australia who were exploited? I believe there were six other children within Australia that were exploited and 
not as a direct result of the activity of this company in Toronto, but as I said before, the linkage of the people who have an interest in this product, they are often offenders. So they will often offend against the children that they have contact with them. Now, what space are they in these children? I, I can't supply that detail. How important is it once you get that file to do everything as fast as you can for that reason, that well, they could be well, offending? Yeah, well, Task Force Argos' first mission, everyone thinks the end state is placing somebody before the court. Uh, that's a secondary matter for Task Force Argos. The first thing is identification of children within the state of Queensland. The prosecution, execution of warrants is the second thing we do. It's about identifying any of those children in the images that may remotely reside in this state and us removing them from harm. And that's the first mission we do. The second part of this operation was the prosecution of offenders. Obviously, uh, a lot of parents will see this tonight and will hear about this story today and you know, might be a little bit concerned about sending little Johnny away on the school camp, etc., or off to scouts. <laughs> what, what is the message to them? Is it that, you know, really do some stringent checks or not everyone is that bad? Well, I, I think uh, the first thing a parent can do is communicate with their child, have some of those safety messages, make sure that they have an open communication about risks. The second thing, if your child's involved in an activity, you'd be asking yourself, is there only one person adult involved in that activity or is there two adults there? So they co-supervise um, children and that in, it, in itself removes the risk to children. So it's about the environment they're going into. You'd say a school camp where there's more than one teacher around, opportunity is reduced because there's more adults around. So if I was a parent, I'd be thinking that way and starting to have the conversations about if my child's going to an activity, how many adults will be there, what environment will that, that child reside in while they're there. Has there been received any account information from Canadian Police, <coughs> that bank account information? Yes. How surprised were the men when the police turned up? Oh, I think everyone's surprised when they get knocked on the door by the police, but, um, you know, I think um, what always worries me with, the, with this activity is often these people don't see they're doing anything wrong because they seem to have this unsavoury interest in child which uh, they see as some rite of passage where it's very wrong. And they were, can you tell us a little bit about their histories? Like we're talking about married men living in the community with a good job. Yeah, I think the, the message we've got to get out of this and you'll get the information about where they were and their ages before. There is no stereotype for this type of person. The idea of it being an old man living alone is gone. They are young offenders as young as 22 years of age and we have had them younger. And then they go to 78. So there's a spectrum of age, there's a spectrum of sex, male and female. There's a spectrum of their, their employment and their activities. Personality wise, you would not be able to determine uh, whether they are an offender or not. Some are fairly jovial and fairly friendly and fairly nice people on the surface. And just to clarify, none, are any of them in um, notable positions within the community? I know we spoke about teachers and that sort of thing, but, but we're not talking talking like uh, members of council, mayors, anything like that? No. no. Police? Sorry, no, can, police. I just, can I just confirm, but all, for the 32 that were arrested in Queensland, were they all men or male and female? All males. Yep. And that's predominantly, if you looked at the material that this company was producing, it was boy lover material. So um, that's not unusual to have males only involved in this activity if it's boy lover material. It's quite common. And 22 to 76 or 78? 78. 78. 78. There's no females, but generically, we don't exclude females from either being a direct offender or often we'll find a passive offender who is a female. By that I mean a female that will allow a male to access her children for exploitation. A two year old, um, a Rotten Hills man that was charged the youngest one, his occupation is listed as a manager. Was he a retail manager, an office manager? No, just manager, we I can't give you that detail. Okay. Thank you.